It's your boy! Mm. Are you cool enough? Strap on your coolest women's shades if you can get them over your big ears and your through your big head and or strap them on there. They're pretty bent up. That's why somebody somebody left these for me. No, I found these on the ground. How you doing? Mash info. I'm running a tight ship here. We got. Uh, I want to thank um, Cassandra's life from Alba Crazy for uh, being a very awesome channel as well as supporting this channel very awesomely. Uh, we don't get enough of that, so thank you. And the Super Chats in the last couple days uh, put up the revenue. I'll check it this afternoon. It, it looks like we're a channel. I think YouTube just went, oh geez, hash info's a channel again. So they gotta, they're gonna have to pay me one of these days coming up here. Thankfully it's uh, Cassandra. Is tipping the tipping the iceberg here. I think we'll have a check by Tuesday. So I'm um, looking for we gotta try and figure out a way from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and they put the check in account Tuesday morning. So I have Saturday, Sunday. The cutoff's probably Sunday. Uh I have no idea. I mean uh I don't even know. I I, I gotta you know and actually I think it goes till Monday Monday. I, I haven't had a check for a, it's been a month and a half or so, two months, actually probably been longer. Actually, no, I don't remember. I'll have to look. I like to try and be truthful with that stuff. Um, I don't know what the I don't pay attention. It, let's just say it's been 60 to 90 days easy that YouTube hasn't sent me a check. So that's not proper. We used to get checks all the time. So I was looking into... Um, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can find a millionaire or a billionaire in the chat. And then I'm going to get you to borrow me money for a day. I'm going to put in my bank account. And then I'm going to give you back the amount of money you gave me in, in American or European. You know, Bretonian bucks. And I'm going to give you the same amount back in Canadian bucks. Right? So I'm going to pay you back. Literally, I'm going to give you a million dollars back and just be like, yo, dude, here's a mill. And you're like, uh, dude, this is Canadian. I'm like, yeah, million Canadian. Oh, we never specified the million back, you know, but, and that's where I'm going to kind of get you, but I'm going to do it on a live stream. So it's like, it's solid, you know, it's going to be solid this way. <clears throat> uh, and if that doesn't work out, I think we're screwed. We're probably screwed. 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 We're screwed. All right. So uh, everybody's talking about uh, biostasis. No, I don't know if you guys know what that means or what. Scientists, researchers, two years ago on the show. It's kind of funny that I can re I can go back and say that I was. This wasn't talked about two years ago. Um, this, the word stasis came up because of a, a conversation we were having. I couldn't tell you who was in the chat or Dusty was there for sure, but, um, uh, the conversation came up stasis and, and so there was a scientist or a professor in the chat one night and, and we're going off back and forth and, uh, really nice, good quality conversation. And, uh, he's like, how do you even know about that? And I said, uh. I played Magic the Gathering in 1993, and in the blue deck, in the water deck, bio, uh, in the water deck, there's a card called Stasis. It's very interesting, uh, the way all this works. Uh, we must have an ancient book. There, there, this is what I know. We have an ancient book that somehow, maybe 50 or 100 years ago, it, it was the... It's the book is hidden. They hid this book away from us. There's people on this planet that have access to knowledge that um, 
they're, they get scientists to build parts and then they have one scientist who actually knows what all these parts are for, but only one person actually knows what all these parts are for. Everybody else is told you're building a tractor spring, you're building a, a bicycle tire, you're building a, a skidoo part. Meanwhile, all this shit goes together, it's for a time machine. And it, like, you guys can think what you want. Why do we have black ops projects, right? So we're gonna be playing Stadia Destiny today, Destiny 2. And you know, I, I, before, like, you know, um, monologue and things like that. I don't really know what I'm with that. I, it's like a speech. You walk out, you say hi, either you do a joke or something's on your mind or something's happened the night before in your city, in your fair city or, or something, right? So you want to get it off your chest or, or, or express concern or something like that. So today it's Saturday, you know, I just want to tell you that open your eyes and look around you. How did we have comic books 75, 85 years ago, way before we went to Mars? How did we have comic books with the face of Mars? Like there's a face in a comic book that says there's a face on Mars or Mars, Martians on the Mar moon or something like that. We have all these old, it's history, but they, they, what they do, and, and they, this is what you don't realize, they, they did this to you in Men in Black. What they do is they, they show you in Men in Black, I believe it's the first one, they go into a video refit shop, like a, a, a VHS shop, and or like a, um, they go to a VHS shop where all these movies are on the wall. So they go to the science fiction section or whatever, and, and they're like, episode 43, season 64 of Zohar vs. the Earth, okay, is actually real. Now, what that means is, when they make a comic book, the entire series might be far-fetched, but one paragraph may solidify, you know, the last 500 years of history here on Earth. When they say, like, Thor came down and defeated the evil dragon, or the giant red-haired dragon, or whatever, the giant red-haired dude. The point is, is that that sentence or that paragraph actually happened they just don't put in in 1943 uh thor beam down you know we had to reset that area of sweden right that's what happens but you think it's not true there's hundred ways from sunday that it's been proven that we've lived before on this earth um and they tell us we haven't but if the researchers and scientists can say that they definitely see that we have, do you know how valuable a scientist and a researcher is? A mind, you do not want to take a mind that is, is breathing and, and full of knowledge from this earth. One, a single mind could turn out to have one of the greatest impacts ever on this earth. We don't know whose mind or when or what they'll say or do, but every mind we're all connected, but if you, some of you are influenced with football, some of you are influenced with hockey, they have taken your creativity factor, they have taken everything, your essence from you. They have given you something to think about. So they influenced you with sports and now taken your sidetracked your mind, wanting you to be a quarterback when you grow up rather than a biostasis engineer, okay? <clears throat> so now, just the other, just recently, Biostasis was used on humans for the first time ever that they're going to say, you know, they're, they're saying this is the first time we've ever used biostasis. That's a crock. Han Solo was in cryogenics, right? So that's, there's Han Solo was before, dude. <laughs> cryogenics is a little different. They're freezing you. And uh, uh, we do have cryogenics, by the way. Cryogenics is absolutely real. But I don't know if you, I don't know if they're freezing humans. I know they freeze brains and they can take the, take the brain out of the, the glass jar and and smoke and ready and it's nice and cool and it's ready and it's frothy and it's stable and it's it's alive and it's pumping blood through cells and they're like okay doctor we have the brain here. Well, they do that already. Um, lungs, livers, brains, hearts, uh, they're all sort of on uh, 
in like a state of, of cryogenics, I'm guessing. I couldn't tell you exactly, but I know it exists. Biostasis will be the future of us um, traveling either um, through space, which is through space and time. Because we know as we travel at a certain speed, it changes the perception of time itself. So space and time, from what they tell us, it could be totally wrong. But when they say an astronaut goes up in space and his twin stays on Earth, and the watch on that his twin is wearing is the same set to the same time when he takes off from Earth as this is the brother in space, and the brother in space gets back from, he did seventeen revelations around the Earth in five minutes, and then the brother he comes lands again. His brother's looks young, or his brother looks older, and the dude looks younger, and the watches are different. You got two specific things that changed while not allowing change to occur. It shouldn't, right? So there's something in between, straight down the middle. As soon as you get up there, and as soon as you start going backwards or forwards, they say something changes, right? So you have to, that's a calculation now. And that's that, that what changes. We have to figure out on what, per, uh, on what ratio or what uh, percentile or fraction was there a difference in time. It's harder to measure uh, physical physiology of a human and say, well, this, it's easier for me to do with plants than it is with humans. Although I'm absolutely, I do it all the time. I say, well, I, I mean, I can even hear your voice sometimes. The stuff that's in your brain can tell me how old you are, right? The stuff that you're influenced by, I can guess your age instantly. If you told me 60 facts about you, hardcore facts. If I got to ask the question, 60 questions, I could tell you how old you are by the time I'm done. <clears throat> and then it's not saying, it'd be like, do you remember the Smurfs? That'd be the first question. So I could, I could Im immediately take you out of the 95s. You know, if you, you'd be born, you know, 95 or before, if you know about Smurfs. Because <clears throat> it's kind of a weird thing. Smurfs were just barely around. And then there's some kids that I would have to say, have you ever watched Smurfs on TV when it came on on Saturday morning as a kid? And that would alleviate all of you young people under 24 instantly. Okay. So there's something right there that's called a timeline. Okay. Now in, in, when you're talking location, there's something called a land marker, but in this, this, the search for future and past and present, there is something in that, in those three areas that we need to put and use as a land marker. So we have a beginning, a start and an, as in a continuation. Do you get that? This is how, the, this is how you deduce and come up and change or, or impact theories that have been ongoing. So if you were to take all these calculations, you know, and you actually started to do small tests with ants and then you use bees and then ladybugs and then, you know, different things. And just, these aren't tests where you're hanging them upside down, torturing them, things like that. Like learning about their life, learning how long they exist, um, you know, how much food they eat. Uh, you know, these things somehow get played into formulas for uh, longevity of life if you have a good life if you have a full life it's because you ate properly you know like not we're not talking about vegetables we're just saying a ladybug eats properly all day every day a ladybug doesn't know fast food right so a ladybug's life is perfect nutritionally all right if if surrounded by lush vegetation okay so these things um we would we would we would input into ourselves in order to give ourselves a longer uh, longevity, right? Well, if a ladybug eats uh, the, the fat off a, a frying pan for six days, the thing doesn't even, it can't even think straight. It forgets to fly. You know, it becomes uh, lethargic and, you know, sedated on the side of the counter for four hours after eating every day. Well, that's you, bud. That's you. You're in that pork frying pan. That's you. Now, if you go eat lush green uh, vegetation filled with chlorophyll and, you know, plant sterols and all these extras and there's terpenes and flavonoids and cannabinoids, imagine how healthy you're going to be. Well, you see a ladybug. You've seen, a lady, you've seen two hours of ladybugs in my uh, garden and over. You've probably seen three and a half hours of, of a ladybug living and working and, and staying healthy. And I watch those videos and I learned, there's, a, there's another bug I do for 12 or 14 minutes there. It sees me, 
it plays dead. It's one of the, it, that's probably a, a little alien. It's, it's definitely like an alien. It's got camouflage, like in the army. It's insane what this thing was. It, be, like, one day that video will have 10 million views and people all over the world are gonna realize that that insect or whatever that thing was, with this weird long little dangly thing and it's armored back, it looked like it was a, a tank from Desert Storm. It has these weird layers on it. Like I get right up close. Well, you see me, I can get into a trichome, so I can see the dick on a bug, man. <laughs> So the next thing we're going to do is grab some of this. We're taking the shades off, take this two off. Holy crow. Potter or nothing. It's dark in here and I was wearing sunglasses. Some beans in here. Ooh -hoo. Oh, I got this card right here. This one's better. Oh, yeah, gonna be a good day. Oh, yes, it's a good day. All right, let's do this. That mango baby. One of the little hashies all time favorites. You already know. It's your boy. Hash to the info. You get this show growing here. A little bit of a late start. I slept in until about 8 a.m. I think I was up at 7.30. I fell back. Sleep for half hour, 20 minutes, and then Gavener. That is the longest I've slept in 20 days, maybe more, probably a lot more than that. I haven't slept until 8 a.m. for over a month or more. I feel, I feel fine. I just feel, I, mean, I feel a little more well rested than, than other days, but my back is stiff down the center, so it's throwing me off like I'm tired, but I'm not. It's just stiffness, which 
<clears throat> it's uh pain pain tires you eh so i'm tired from being in pain um today will be a day of relief i don't know why i i don't want to be in pain on saturday i guess all week i'm doing stuff too hard to didn't sit too much this week i probably should have sat about six hours more than than i did you know more than that i should probably sat at the book I don't know, when you say more, it sounds crazy to say you sit for any length of time. I don't like sitting. I haven't sat for probably four years. <laughs> I don't sit down. Um, I don't like to sit down. Actually, and I mean, if I sat down about four years ago, it was for like an hour. Um, but, no, I shouldn't say that. I used to sit down, but it was... Since my accident two years ago, I don't sit at all. I used to sit maybe an hour or two a day. Now I don't I can't sit. Yeah, I used to sit for a couple hours a day. If if there was sitting to be done, I'd be like, oh, I'll sit for an hour. But I usually was, I don't know, I don't remember. I can't remember anything. Like, it's all kind of black. If I go four years ago, I can't remember stuff. And then I can remember stuff from my childhood. I guess I probably because it's not that memorable. Then if four years ago, my buying, buying the house was memorable. I don't really remember that day at all, so that's weird. But I mean, you know, there's lots of things. Like, I don't remember about six days, you know. In the beginning, I don't remember the six days, and I used to. That's scary. I mean, does it suck? Yeah. Is it permanently gone? Probably by now, if it hasn't returned. Uh, I had, I was, like, flooded with memories one day. One day, I had, like, ten memories come that, I, like, I never, I couldn't remember. And I was like, oh, this, I was like, I don't know why, but shit was like coming to me last week or 20 days ago. I was like, it's weird. Over the last three to six months, you guys have seen him actually starting to remember stuff. And uh, like, I could tell you a story of something that happened a long time ago. All that stuff's coming back to me. Like in the last six months, stuff just came back to me. I should probably look into, uh, or not, probably be pretty sad and be like, holy crap, this is going to happen next. I I never looked into, um, you know, I never self-diagnosed myself and, you know, went at it and said, okay, what are the, this is what it could be. And then, you know, like, when's my memory coming back? Does memory come back when you forget, when you have some sort of amnesia? temporary memory loss or I don't know what you would call it like I can't even believe there's a term amnesia you know I, I really can't and it's very sad and super scary um thankfully uh this didn't happen in a time where I had more stuff to remember that was crucial because well I'll say this then there would be a lot then I would be a lot oh, I'm kind of at the point in my life now where uh, that kind of era of my life is over. So I guess I could forget that stuff, unfortunately. But. <clears throat> the things that are really ingrained in me were the things that I loved to do and the things that I did very often, repeatedly, daily. For whatever reason, it couldn't steal those from me. Not all of them. It definitely took a lot of it right away. Like, I mean, even, even my hash process was, uh, and still is, not where, like, there's stuff that I've forgotten, little tricks and things I was doing, I'll never remember. So doing things differently helped me stumble upon other new tricks and trades, right? And <coughs> being blessed to run, you know, 40, 50, 60, 75 uh, runs of bubble hash. Uh, 
has taught me, and I mean like that's in that's in one batch, but that's taught me to um, <clears throat> well, number one, doing doing that, you know, you need a lot of cannabis to make a tiny bit of hash, and I think some people think that oh you don't need the you don't need the, the pounds, well you don't the, don't understand nothing, and if you saw how much pounds I put into a run of bubble hash. And how little comes out and I put it in my hand and before it wouldn't fit in my arms you know now you're saying well the, 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 you you might need more hash than that <coughs> and that's right you know <coughs> but the problem is is the process you know these home Everything about it is kind of meant for smaller scale. Uh, for some of you, what is small scale, or what I call small scale, for some of you is like bigger than you've ever ran before. And I mean, that's cool for me and it, it does suck for you. I hope you can up your game and, and pound more through the bags uh, harder than you've ever pounded through there before. You, until you pound through those bags, you're never gonna understand what it's like. Um, <clears throat> there's a sort of feeling of gratitude when you can take a huge bag of buds and, and take all the leaf out of it and just collect the glandular heads, the trikes, right? If you can collect those glandular heads, then I'd like to hear your numbers, right? Like if, if you can get a decent batch, I should say, I'd like to hear your numbers, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, I'll, I'm going to give you like a test. And your test will be, can you get more on the next run? That's it. It's not, uh, go calculate stuff. All I need you to do is take the same amount that you did, different kind, betterly grown, whatever it is, and, and bash it again through the same amount, through the same kits, and see if your yield increased. Now, if it increased, I want, then I'll ask you this question on your second time. I'll say, why did you, why did your yield increase? I want 500 words or more. You know, you better have more than 500 words. I better hear nine ways from Sunday, how you bettered your last grow. I did. I did 50 ways from Sunday. I bettered this grow from last year's. <coughs> Not to mention the outright spectacular size of it. And this is in containers, like small containers compared to, you know, what people are growing these the same size in with 100 gallon containers. You know, set in the ground. I'm like, uh, you got a long way to go before you're as good as the hash man. You know, if I took one of my plants and slammed them in the ground, 20 footers all day. And if I don't care if you believe me or not, I'm gonna do it. You just wait till next year, bud. You wait till next year, bud. Anyone that scoffed or laughed when I said 20 footers, I'll tell you this. You are not even close to a good grower because 20 footers are nothing. I told you all in 1999, I saw, I watched a dude trimming from a second story balcony in Spain. So remember that I've seen dudes in Arizona with a plant bigger than their trailer, twice as tall as their trailer and, you know, three quarters as wide as his trailer. <clears throat> Rastafari. I don't talk about a lot of stuff, but. I 
And then I got my East Coast master buddy. No clue who he is or was or what he turned out and ended up to be, but master grower of all, you know. I've never seen a garden on Instagram to this day that looked like this, and this isn't mine. I have no clue who this guy is. The guy gets me up on a chat room 21, 24, 22 years ago. Hang on, I gotta do some math here. 20 years ago. <coughs> and he shows me pictures of buds the size of my head. And, they're, and these colas are nestled in next to each other, 24 across and 64 down the line. So he's looking at, you know, whatever that is, 20, like 150 plants with uh, probably five to seven ounces on them. So um, call it six ounces at 150, he's got 800 ounces. No, he doesn't, he has 900 ounces. Now, 800 ounces would be uh, 400 pounds. So he has uh, 410 uh, something pounds. 420 pounds, it actually comes, he probably had a 420 pound room right there. 24 by 64 at, at six ounces a plant is 420 pounds. Rastafari, Rastamon. This is where, this is where you can do math, eh? This is where if you do math, you can put up a numeric, you can put up a mathematical number and what you're trying to hit is your ounces, right? Everything else is easy to do. If you can't count to 64 and run 24 across and 64 down, I mean, go color a coloring book, eh? I'm, I'm gonna color a picture today too. I haven't decided what. But I have markers. Oh, maybe I won't do a picture. Maybe I'll draw on the board. I have one of those washable boards. I'm doing a drawing. Uh, someone taught. Someone taught me how. Somebody taught me how to draw. Uh, in like three D and stuff. So I want to continue the three D drawing. I want to do a sphere today. Uh, like a 3D parallel uh, parallelogram? Is that a word? Parallelogram. Like I want to do a, a triangle. Anyway, that's 3D. <coughs> a pyramid, triangle, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to do a sphere. And something else too we're going to do. Christina in the house. How you doing? Where are you from, Christina? How you doing? Hello with a question mark. Christina, do you have a YouTube channel? You don't have a YouTube channel. Live stream with cart. Live stream with cart. Funniest video ever one year ago, six months ago. Can you, uh, could you like my video, please? Please. Resident Evil 5. People still play that game. I played that game when it was cool, you know? When the, when the eight, when the eight-sided directional controller, you know, blew, but that's all you had. <laughs> PlayStation, you guys, seriously. <laughs> I don't know what happened to PlayStation. They got a little bit better, you know? They... PlayStation is actually not as bad as it used to be. I mean, I, I tried it. It's awful. I had a PS4 the day it came out, and I'm telling you, it was awful. I ended up getting that Star Wars Battlefront or something. Man, was it awful. I don't know. I love Star Wars. I played uh, Nintendo 64, had the uh, champion, the battle coins or something. The champ. What are those things called from Star Wars? Battle chips or something. I don't know. They were like uh, Star Wars logos from like the Rebellion, the red symbol. I don't know, so I forgot that. I used to never forget that term. We said that for like 17 years. Somebody said it in the chat like, 
two years ago, a year and a half ago, and I was like, that sounds from Battle Chips or something. Star Wars Battle Coins? Damn it! Something to do with Star Wars. Champion Points? Something Champion Points or something. Skill Points? Star Wars Skill Points? Ugh. I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna say, what are those things called from Star Wars? Watch Google help me, because otherwise I'm going to be thinking about this stupid thing all day. Star Wars Battle Coins or something? And yeah, we're going to put on... I can put the TV on and get this all ready. Actually, it takes a second to download Destiny 2. I'm going to show you how long it takes for me to download it. Like a half second, I'll probably have it downloaded. I'm running uh, YouTube on my... Uh, computer as well i'm running a live stream and there's probably somebody watching netflix so there you go that's a lot of stuff watch how smooth and effortlessly i run this off wi-fi oh yeah isn't is there a plug i think i can plug in direct i'm not gonna i could though and really crush the competition i don't need any faster like i mean i'll take it i i remember there was a time when i you know I'd, i had dial-up internet and i was playing against people who didn't have whatever they had i don't remember what was well maybe i was playing on like 26k i could even been playing on 14k i uh i'm not gonna say anything but just i just had crappy internet in 1999 and um because of my influence and because i kept saying like this blows like like i'm a gamer i'm crushing people but you know they're still getting me once in a while eh and there was a ton of people who gamed at, like, people were gamers. Like, this, that was a cool thing to do. Like, we had a real arcade vibe in this uh, neck of the woods in the 90s. Real arcade vibe. And here's the thing. Um, and I'm not, I'm, Asian people would play at the arcades. And they were some of the best people I played. I'd still crush all of them. But there was a couple that they were like wizards with Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Wizards. And they would actually make me reach into my pocket and pull out 50 cents or a quarter. It started out being a quarter, but then, you know, when stuff got really heavy, Mortal Kombat 4 came out at Lasers or something like that. I don't remember which one. Something came out at Lasers first, you know, in only place to have it in, in a province of 1.5 million. I'm like, Mom, we got to go to Lasers. It was like 1993 or 94. And it was a pretty rough joint. You weren't allowed to smoke cigarettes in there. And there's always people smoking cigarettes, putting them out on other people's foreheads and stuff, eh? And I'm 13 years old. And these are like, you know, they're probably selling drugs in the place. Like, I can't say, but I mean, there was some real sketch people. Like, I, I grew up in a place where there was a lot of sketch. And I'm like, oh, are you uh, so-and-so's brother? And then <laughs> they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know him. And he's like, oh, okay. And the dude's like the most psycho dude I've ever met in my life, eh? And and this guy's like three quarters or half as psycho. So I'm like, I'll just let him know that his brother likes me, eh? <laughs> but yeah, the guy was huge. Like 6'2", 400 pounds, built like a fuck brick shit house, Just boom, eh? And, I, and here I am, 13. And they don't, these people were just evil. They didn't, give, they didn't care who you were. You had to know, if you didn't say the name or know someone, like... You were next to get a cigarette butt put on on your head, eh? And my mom went in there with me and she's like, she pulled me aside. She's like, we have to go right now. You are not staying here. And I'm like, mom, I'm playing this game. I'm not scared of these people and they're not going to do anything to me. I said, you go shopping, go shopping for shoes. She take off. I swear a couple times I barely made it out of there alive. And I, I shut my mouth and played the game, but I'm crushing them. And these, these adults are reaching into their pockets and they're like, you get half a console and they're literally like, boom, I got guys double ax handling the entire side of their machine. And I'm like sitting there trickling pee down my leg. <laughs> and it says like four seconds, three seconds, you lose a two seconds, you lose. And I'm like, <laughs> just awesome. Hey, eh? you guys have no idea. So uh, not, I, so you grow up, you know, people can't, you know, intimidate you and fear tactic you and fear monger you, things like that, eh? Like, I grew up, like, with the most dirty, like, not, I don't like them or that style. 
you're forced into it. When you're in grade four, you know, when everyone's around and there's six guys that play soccer, you go outside and you play soccer with those six guys. Or you go skip rope with the chicks. I tried that. You get in more fights on Friday if you go skip rope with the chicks than you end up in on Friday if you go play soccer and knock a couple of them down while you're playing the sport. You don't have to beat those two up come Friday. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> when, when you're a kid, there's always this... Kids always want to fight. I don't know what it is with kids, but there's too much... Kids got a... Oh, like I grew up with people just They always wanted to fight. And I was just like, can we play soccer, bud? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you, eh? And... Ah, you know, you get cheap, so then you're, you're beating them in soccer and you get cheap shot and they trip you and you just take a tumble. You hurt your ankle, you twist your wrist, you, you snap your arm, whatever it is, and you're pissed, right? Like you get out of the hospital, you go back to school and you're pissed when you're in grade four. You're like, where is Jeremy, eh? Uh, nah, I don't know what's wrong with kids though nowadays. Nowadays, kids see stuff on TV and they take it to this level that's like... A level of like when you have an intruder in your house, you reach for a knife or so, you know, like if someone's in your home having a home invasion, you get a weapon to defend yourself. But you don't go to school with a like brand, brandishing a weapon. School is for opening books. School is for a person at the front to teach you how to count. You know, I, I'm just disgusted with uh, and the teachers, the level of teaching, like how could you not sniff out four, four kids in the back that... You know, they're all getting ready to have a big gang war in the back at noon. Like, <clears throat> hi, good morning, Cassandra. I am so sorry I have not done my hair for you this morning. I, uh, <laughs> I will, I promise I'll have my hair done by lunch. Mm, don't think, I'll do it. I promise I'll have my hair done. At some point today, I'll get it did. Can we, can I work this though? I think I could, I think there's only one daily live streamer in the world that even dares do this, isn't there? Have you ever met anyone on YouTube that's totally just like, oh, you, this dude, you should see this dude. And I still look pretty good. Like, you gotta say, I look decent for being so weird looking, right? It's like, mm, I bang him, eh? Uh, uh. I have tea in front of me. I let it get cool a little bit. Well, I was eating crunchy bits out of the tea, so I don't know if I'm giving away any info, but let's just say I threw a lot of mint in this tea. Mmm. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, and that's the one thing I don't care for is the little bits going down. I have to chew it. Ah, that was, it wasn't a little bit. That was like, uh, I was like two rips. Well, Cassandra, you know what time it is, don't you? We're gonna go over to this grinder. Uh, it says in the Stadia mobile app, your tap your avatar and choose add. Wait, what? Use your phone to add an account. In the Stadia mobile app, tap your avatar. Oh, oh excuse me, Cassandra. It's that tea. I'm going to be burping, just so you know. If you don't like burping, I'm so sorry. But that tea has got something. It's, it, um, oh. It does, uh, it screws, it doesn't, it's a good thing, but it, it takes your gut flora, everything in your stomach. I swear it goes like this. It takes all the stuff that's in your stomach, goes, okay, you suck, you suck, you suck, and it grabs it all together. This is what I feel like it does, and it puts it all in a ball, and it, like, gets it going down the right place. It, I swear, it, like, straightens out my gut flora. And the way I know it is because when I'm done, after I drink the tea, I can go a couple days and, and go to the washroom so just effortlessly. And, and then, but I never get, like, stomach aches for, like, I don't get stomach aches, but... My stomach feels absolutely so good from drinking teas. Um, I know there's evidence of of uh, stomach inflammation from the the gluten and things like that. I swear, something this counteracts MK Ultra as well as the 
the sugar. This does stuff for sugar because people think about this. Um, or you could check my old video. I used to eat those peanut butter, chocolate peanut butter cups. And they're quite high in sugar. I mean, like I gained, I gained like 10 of them. Like most people would probably gain like three, four pounds. I gained like half a pound. But two days later, I would lose it. Like I just wouldn't eat those every, you don't need to eat that. It, what it does is when you take a high dose of edibles, it takes your, your gas tank, your endo, this, you have one, we all have it in us, an ECS system, an endocannabinoid system. And the gas tank, the system is depleted of cannabinoid juice, we'll call it. When you eat cannabis, okay, here's, here's a perfect example of a different, a different item besides cannabis, pineapple. It's high in brolium or something like that. If you want to lose weight, you eat pineapple, but you need to eat 40 pineapples every two days or something in order for the brolium to really, to get the full amount. So what I do is I take 40 ounces of cannabis or grams of cannabis, take a number, I take 40 of cannabis, 40 handfuls of cannabis, okay, that's a perfect example, and I put it into my hash bags and then I only pull out and then a lot of it stays in the bags and it only pulls out the trichomes. So I have these trichomes in a small amount here and I have all this cannabis here, just like there's all those pineapples there. They take out and pull out just the brolium and put it into a dehydrated capsule, right? So I'm doing the exact same thing. I, in fact, dry out the trikes when they're moist and, and cold and wet. I dry it out completely and I put it in a container and store it. But if you take, and I do take probably, you know, if you were to do milligram, I don't know what the, what the term would be for, uh, it, the ratio would probably work out similar. And I don't know if that lies with I don't know why, but I bet you the ratio of concentrating almost anything is always around 5% of the, of the said whole product. Now, not, that's not always true. Of course you can concentrate something, but mm, well, I don't know. Anyway, cannabis, you can concentrate. If you take a thousand grams of cannabis and you only take the trichome heads, how much do you actually get? of the thousand grams. And if it's wet, you get a lot less. It's a lot better, but it's way less. It's not always, I mean, yeah, it's better. In my experience, it's, well, I, I mean, I just, I guess some of it, I never tried it both ways. Uh, it's gotta be better. It only, it only would make sense that it's better. In fact, if it wasn't better, it wouldn't make scientific sense. That's right. So it's always better fresh. You always teach me new stuff. Love it. <clears throat> well, thank you uh, for that um, nice comment. Um, let me get right into this then, I think. Shall I? Shall we? My dear friend Cassandra. How was your slumber, my dear? It's 1021 here. You got 921. Did you have a good sleep? Let's go in here, I think. I haven't seen Dee Dee for a really long time. I think Dee Dee went to, uh, I think she's on vacation. She hasn't been live streaming. I didn't check. It's been a while since I've seen her. Five days. Did you, uh, 
astronomy. What time did you go to sleep last night? I was up till, I didn't, guess, I didn't stay up late. Actually, I don't know what time I was up till. I think it was 11, maybe 10. Ah, uh, no, it was way after 10. I was up till at least 11. <laughs> no, I made it past 11. There was 11 o'clock news and we just fall asleep right after that. I usually stay up way later, but it's near the early one. I'll be up early, uh, I mean, I'll be up late and I'll be up early for the next few months. I'm going to try and catch a, maybe I'll do like a little sleep stream, nap stream. Maybe we'll do like a super chat me while I'm napping stream. <clears throat> I, uh, I do love my sleep streams. I love doing them because, uh, I get to see myself sleeping. I love to study myself which is fair i am at the point now where i'm like like what can i do to better my sleep so i put a pillow between my legs like not the it, not between my legs between my knees right at the tip of my knee i take the corner of a pillow and i put it between my legs oh my god everybody please try it if you have a bad back if you're a guy with a bad back or absolutely a girl with a bad back the reason i said a guy with a bad back I mean, I know a lot of guys that lift heavy things, like furniture and stuff. Of course, there's ladies that do too. And maybe if you aren't if you aren't strong enough, you're not lifting with your legs. Or if your legs are weaker as well, then you're using your upper body, which may be stronger than your legs. But I don't really... I'm, I See, unfortunately, I'm strong upper body and pretty strong legs. So I, will make, I made a habit of lifting however I, you know... If I, if I bend down, I just bend down and lift it up like this, which puts all like weight everywhere, right? Eh? So my later years, <clears throat> even in the last couple of years, I went to see this, uh, this lady who's, uh, she's like a occupational therapist, maybe. I don't even know what the term is. She, she's a very smart lady, but the guy was a goof. Jason, you're such a goof here in the city. There's a goof. I'm going to give such a bad review to him. <clears throat> anyway uh the girl was really nice the lady the guy was such a goof he's real like he was like a jock like the like the goof was still in grade 11 real low iq on him too probably banging roids right in his pecker um trying to maintain that uh that persona that image you know what makes you cool? What comes out of here and what you what you think about in here. It's not how how big your Rolex is. It's not how big your TV is. It's not how big your plants are. Well, it kind of is actually. I take that one too. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Shiva. It's abs. You are cool if you grow monsters. You are extra cool if you grow big. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I should never have said that. It's that's true. You the cool the bigger you grow, the cooler you are. Yo, you've been live with the hash man. We're coming on sixty minutes of glory here, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in. Cassandra's life at Albuquerque. I'm posting your uh, your link in the chat. I, you've been uh, very, very kind. Um, I will get it into that other thing today. Um, damn it. Unfortunately, I got to, I have to work. I don't even, I don't like saying that word. I, I actually hope that this can take off where I don't have to do that in the future. But for now, this is uh, kind of, I have to do it, I guess. I don't have to. I'm choosing to do it because um, I haven't really decided why. You know, things. some things are a mystery. Some things are kind of up in the air with what happened to this girl. Rather than calling about myself, uh, I chose to phone on her behalf. 
So next week I call back and I call and I call on my behalf, but I put her ahead of my needs, even though my needs at this point were pretty crucial. Um, I don't, nothing, nothing I do matters. Like I don't really. I gave myself a couple of years more. I'm going to go till 2022 doing what I do. And I'm going to take it to a far new level now. So I hope you all want to join me and stay tuned. Another bean. And it's that good, good. It's that wicked, good, good. What do you mean in everything you do matters? Uh, I don't, what do you mean everything you do matters? I didn't, I, th I don't think I said that. I think I said, here, we'll rewind it. Let's listen. I'm pretty sure I said, right now, everything I do doesn't matter. Make it easier. For now, I guess. I don't know. Oh, it don't matter. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like my life is on is in stasis right now. Um, so it means to put things on hold. Absolutely. Uh, I've always put my life on hold. I've uh, I manifested this life, you know, decades ago. And it, it, if I waited 20 years for this life, I can wait another two years. Um, God's willing and, and health prevailing uh, it should be no problem. But I have a in two years time, I'll have a serious, uh, I'll have a serious, serious work to do. And I'll, I should be nearing completion by then. And, um, I'm going at things a little differently than originally planned. Everything I do does matter. You're right. But no, but ah, okay. Yes, you're right. But I don't feel that it's hard to get it. It's hard to do stuff when you're stuck trying to help somebody else or you know that you can't really do it because everything is tied up. Um, I got I got 10 reasons actually. Uh, very, very frustrating. Um, I got tea though. And I guess that's something else I can I can consider as well. Others fail, maybe while others uh, accrue a bad name. I can. I can garnish a good one. And it, it's not that even. It's more what I can do in the time while they're failing. I can learn why they failed. I can get into trending more, and then crush it harder later when I go analytically at what made that not work why what they branded how they branded how they marketed it to people what you know ages or sex of person or honestly what race because what i've seen is is certain cultures or races will, will choose a certain technique east indians love a hookah uh i don't i don't actually know what jamaicans like spliffs right i think a jamaican loves a spliff a chalice for sure a hash pipe i mean i don't know like a jamaican is like me you know it's it's actually pretty interesting i love a good gurgle i love a, i love you know it's everything you know so a, a jamaican is everything and it's one of the few no well, i guess a, a dutch 
I'm Dutch and I'm Jamaican. Yeah. So you, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. I swear by that, you know, British, absolutely uh, European, the same thing as me, you know, I just say Dutch because it's in Europe, but Dutch, Dutch held it down in Europe harder than anyone. All right. Unless you go to Morocco and Spain and places like that. But for an area of the world, you know, where, where they were looked at, you know, and critiqued and criticized and they stood up and went, no, our countries run smoother, less crime you know, less less weird people on the streets than Winnipeg. No, I'd say Amsterdam is crushing Winnipeg for the last 50 years, okay? So you know what that means? And I'm talking environmentally, as well as sound minds, as well as educated people. So Winnipeg, wake up, legalize, allow people to blow a reefer on the street instead of shooting guns off. So many less guns would be fired if people were allowed to blow reefers on the streets. But no, you know, we got a weird city and I'm going to explain. I'm going to go up. I'm going to get to go in front of people and I'm going to explain how this city got to be so crim crime ridden, criminally fueled, you know, gangster and mafia run on the highest levels. I'll tell you right now, the people who are calling the shots, you better shut your mouth from now on. We're watching you. Same thing, a New York mafia, Italian mafia crime boss was killed by a teenager. Anonymous is all over the world. People should tread very lightly. You know, they sent me some messages. They're like, we love what you do. I'm like, cheers. I fear you guys. I'm like, I do nothing wrong. They're like, oh, we know you don't. I'm like, you guys are freaky, man. He laughs. Never heard from him again. I just go like this all the time on the show and nod my head. And I'm pretty sure dude goes, dude, wearing the mask is like. It's a V, eh? It's also a peace sign, but this is a V. Don't forget that. There's people all over the world that, you know, they can't stand you know, um, these uh, uh, people who call the shots, we'll say, all over the world, people that work for them, like everybody in their, in their little peddly organizations is trying to get to the top. You know, it's the worst, it's the worst lifestyle you could possibly ever want to get into. You know, if you're not working for the police or politicians, they're trying to kill you. So you, you like that type of lifestyle, that ain't for somebody. And, and that doesn't even really exist. You want to know where that lifestyle comes from? It's created from the inside. Inside out. They control everything. And they say who gets to even pretend to be some goof on the corner running this block. You should see what happens if you go try and claim you own a block. <laughs> you, they'll just drive by and just... <sighs> It doesn't matter where you live, Chicago, you know, Edmonton, Calgary, Washington, New York. You always get some hero that's there for a week and gone the next. The only people that aren't are the people that shut their mouths. Clearly no other people. And understand, you know, like you can either look there's going to be a time and a place for everyone to get involved and out the people that are the most evil. We're just collecting enough data on these people to prove their guilt. <clears throat> it takes years. These are the people that run entire cities, if not countries. <clears throat> If I ever hear a family name in this city that thinks they run shit, I'll go straight to Anonymous. Can't stand the thought of people like that. 
I can't stand. I want to hear. I want to hear from people in this city. If you know someone that thinks they're a shot caller, you can you can message me confidentially, and I promise you. You know shot callers. You give me their name. You give me the shot caller's name. I'll take it to the right people in an hour. If someone's threatening you, you got a shot caller threatening you in this city, you come to me. You give me their name. I got some secret service friends. I would love to hang out with them. <clears throat> you wait and see what's coming, Winnipeg. You screwed up. You got too dirty. You got too cracked out. And most of you have no hearts. And I want you gone. I want you out of the city now. Jailed, confined, and I ain't gonna rest until at least 50% of you are gone because of me. Jailed, confined in a cell where you belong like a rat. Robert, why are you always in here? I'm back. I had to chase Robert down the hallway. He kept clawing my legs down here. I'm like, God. Yeah, I live in a really... It's a dark time here in Canada. You know, you got more people worried about if somebody's smoking pot on the street than you do um, people actually doing wrong, you know? You have backdoor business deals all over this province for decades. Politicians getting caught red-handed, not being put in jail. Like, it, it blows my mind to see how many people can do a property, property deal in this city and make money off of it. I just want people to know if you're if you're scamming this city I'm gonna make sure you pay extra now if you're a political figure or you've somehow insider traded in any way shape or form when I go around and I hand out a special card to everybody in these buildings that they know their boss or their employee someone is cracked out and stealing from the system because they think they're a shot caller you wait bud there's no more of this half price Tuesdays on your property taxes or nothing like that ever again. Absolutely disgusted. You got these people, they'll come around to my area here. Every, like, I've only been here five years. They'll come around here and every year they want to know if I did any renovations, you know? I'm like, oh, you, up, you upgraded your house? Went up your taxes. Oh, you did this? Up your taxes, bud. So I just, you don't even come around. Like I won't ever open it. That door will never be open. No, no doors, no gates get open for, if you don't know me, if you can't say my full name and give me three nicknames for me, if you show up on my door, I will walk you to the end and I'll tell you, you come back and I'll walk you back next time a little faster and quicker. And if you do it a third time, I'll run you to the sidewalk. <clears throat> I take security extremely seriously. I have a couple things in place that, uh, you know, the day even one of those goes off is the day someone's not going to remember what happened to them. <clears throat> I got a goof named Blowhole, wicked narc here from the city. I don't think the guy realizes. Cops are definitely watching that guy. The guy's a stalker, man. He's a creepy, creepy dude. Mega troll. 
You know what's even weirder is he's like 40 and he plays this a kids game with like really young kids. He's super creepy, man. He hangs out with 10 year olds. I don't know if that's even, I, that shouldn't be legal. <coughs> Kids shouldn't be able to play the same games as adults. They should go to a whole different uh, online world. Only for kids. And if adult shows up on there, you know, uh, well, they should immediately ban the account. And if the adult keeps showing up on there, you know, that's getting, like, why? Why do you want to go play with little kids? You got the FTC more worried about, you got the FTC more worried about YouTube than actual these gaming platforms like Twitch, where there is absolutely way, way more racist stuff there than any other platform in the world. Like, that's where Ice Poseidon was. His, he created the toxicity that still will, will forever exist on that platform. Just the icons, like the, the name they use, the try hard, that's a black guy with an afro. Like, that's disgusting. Everything about what they do is disgusting. <clears throat> Twitch is a uh, run uh, to degrade black people. And I'm going to do a documentary on that. I went there the other day. Then I uh, logged in and looked around. I have, I've had a thing there for a while. I forgot. I actually signed up for Twitch and, uh, a year and a half ago. You know, I went in there the other day and some of these emojis and these icons and stuff, it's just so racistly, uh, it's just so racist. A very, very racist platform that I logged off and I looked at my YouTube and I went and looked at some of my live chats and I saw how there was never one slander towards any race, let alone like six a minute. So, I think I'm going to stay on YouTube for a while longer, like just YouTube. <clears throat> I really was going to go to Twitch like last week or week before, but uh, not the whole time, just most, I was going to game there. I, get, I guess I could still try it, but I don't want to. A couple weeks ago, I was really wanting to. But... It's funny, you know, my everything. So they're trying to, you know, my monetization picked up. Um, more views are happening. Or it's not more, but more than it had been for the last little while. Sort of like where it used to be before, but still it's off. It'll be there. It'll get there, but it's off still. Um, the amount that it's off is... Uh, making me mad but we'll see if it picks up I it's been two weeks so I should give it another three or four and then I'll know for sure you know whether I want to continue here but it is gaining momentum I mean here I'll uh, let me see uh, I mean yeah like I have family members that are black right like, <coughs> people are People don't know that, like, when you're racist, you're being mean to a world. You're not being mean to one person. Perfect. So we got to get that going. We have this here. Cassandra. Cassandra. I love your name, by the way. Oh, everybody, could you please go share this video? 
Um, I'm asking everybody to share this video on your social medias. Where did that other page go? All right. Pop this in your social medias. This is the most popular upload that I've ever done on YouTube. Um, 63,000 63, views or something. So you will click on that one for me. Appreciatory valve wide open. Um, uh, share that and share that and uh, create a playlist with that video. Smash the like button. <laughs> I love I love my comment section. It is sick. <laughs> buddy's Buddy's been calling me Ricky for two decades. <laughs> Too funny. I love hash. Or has to far eye.
smokes. I don't even. I'm not watching the show. But I was. My header, it doesn't say duration though. Excellent stream. That's what it should say. Peace.